The stress to the Earth from the incoming planets will not only cause our planet to reel to and fro, but will utterly break it down. Other translations of Isaiah's prophecy say that the Earth will shake violently, split asunder, or utterly collapse. This will be the fate of Mars and Venus as well. When Mars and Venus finally arrive at Earth's vicinity, the rolling motions, shaking, trembling, and reeling to and fro among all three planets will become violent. As John described what he saw, there will be a war in heaven. The church and outside biblical scholars thoroughly misinterpret this verse and entire chapter 12 of Revelations. Biblical scholars are, as one commentator put it, perplexed at John's statement of a war in heaven and by the chapter as a whole, leaving them only to speculate and do so with much poetic fancy. The church has a different, but just as dysfunctional problem. With full certainty, it believes that the war in heaven described by John in Revelation refers to the rebellion during the pre-mortal council. Revelation tells us that there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. <clears throat> what a perilous time that must have been. The Almighty himself was pitted against the sun of the morning. We were there while that was going on. That must have been a desperately difficult struggle with a grand triumphal victory. Concerning those desperate times, the Lord spoke to Job out of the whirlwind and said, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Unfortunately, this narrative could not be more wrong. As we look at chapter 12 more closely, using Joseph Smith's restored translation, we will find that it says nothing about the premortal council. And while the chapter relies upon the ancient planetary archetypes, there really is nothing fanciful or poetic about the imagery. Lastly, Joseph Smith provides a partial key to understanding the chapter, identifying its main actors. In order to correctly interpret the book of Revelation, including chapter 12, it's necessary to follow certain contextual ground rules. The first rule was given by John himself in the first verse of the Revelation. Revelation is a record of things John saw that were shortly to come to pass. That is, all the events seen by John were in the future. Joseph Smith made this verse unmistakably clear. The visions of John had nothing to do with the events of previous dispensations. Interpretations such as these by the church in its manuals cannot be true. 
Revelation 12 through 14 is not a historical overview. It is an overview of the future. While John's vision was about a war in heaven, it was not about the first war in pre-mortality. The war John saw is still to come.